for you guys who play bass, come on up and take a look. I don't need the mic, I can talk to you right here. Um, one of the main things I like to have, especially for basses like this, uh, bolt-on basses, because they tend to be a bit, you know, they stretch out, the sound stretches out a lot, is a compressor. And this is a very good one. This one's made by Aphex, which is a company that I've worked with for years. The nice thing about this compressor is it's, um, it's very much like a studio compressor in LA-2A. It has a, a, an op amp in it, which is a little light, um, and a diode. And so it sees the light go on every time you hit a note, and the brighter the light gets, the circuit pushes it back. And the interesting thing about it is it kind of permeates, um, it kind of memorizes how you're playing. So if you play into it for just a few seconds, it kind of gets used to how fast and how slow you're playing. And it adjusts by itself, which is very good. Um, the reason I like having this again is because it kind of gives you the same effect that you have when you crank up these tube amps. Because what happens is when you turn the tube amps up really loud, it's a great sound. The tubes compress because they only can go so loud. And that's a great sound that you want to get. You don't really want to you know, kill yourself. So since I usually use transistorized amps, this works very well to replicate that kind of feel. Plus it gives you a lot of sustain because when you hit a note, the first note gets pushed down and then it's slowly right and then the okay. decay. Yeah, exactly correct. So see without it. Very good for a lot of things. Okay, so that's that. I usually use that at the front end. I have the very compressed, which I normally don't do, but I think in this venue it's kind of the right way to go if you're just by yourself. Uh, next I have a uh, octave pedal which I started using uh, with Black Label Society because we were doing some things where we were tuned down very low. We had some keyboards on the record and I thought, wouldn't it be great if I just uh, play the notes up higher so it'd sound like another guitar and still have the octave. So that's, that's what I saw. So I usually use the EBS pedal, but this one's kind of nice. This is an MXR one. And they work particularly well. Effects, all these effects will work a lot nicer with the compressor in front of it because it keeps the level a little more... In front of it, yeah. 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 keeps the level a little more straight ahead. It doesn't vary, so the effects just kind of grab onto everything a little better. Mm. Everything becomes more obvious. So that's what I like to do. You can do it without it, too. Right? You could be Jack Bruce and Eric Clapton. Oh, that's not guess. So that's something I like to kick in every now and again just to get more girth and space, which is a great little effect. If you use it sparingly, uh -huh. it's very nice in the middle of a song if you just kind of kick that in. If you hear it through a PA, all of a sudden the floor comes up, you know? Next thing is my distortion pedal, which I'm very proud of. Uh, this is one that I designed myself and uh, Ashdown put it together for me. And they did a great job on it. It's exactly what I wanted. It's, I call it the hyperdrive. Um, the design on it, the black and red and all that, that's something I did on a computer and gave it to them and they did that so this is exactly precisely what I wanted it to be yeah so it's not just put his name on it and sell them kids no uh, the circuit works great if you want to come here I'll show you what's what's going on with it it's very cool I'll probably need my glasses so I can show you what I can see okay so what this actually is is you have an input level just to, to set it so it feeds the uh, whole unit at its optimum uh, next is a frequency sweep. Uh, do you guys know what a parametric uh, EQ is? Parametric EQ, okay, you have the, the ones with the sliders, right? Now that's a graphic EQ, and you deliberately have like, that's uh, low frequency, that's the next frequency, that's the next frequency. And what happens with that is it pulls up the frequencies next to it. A parametric has a very, can, can be a very narrow frequency. So in other words, as I'm talking to you now, you're hearing the full range of my voice, okay? If I do that, I'm cutting off a lot of low frequency and a lot of high frequency, really focusing that sound. That's essentially what this does. Now, what's great about it is that before the distortion even kicks in, I can kind of tune where I want that distortion to sound. All right, now, there's a couple of different sounds that I like to hear. There's that, that kind of low cello distortion, you know? But the stuff I really love is the harmonic stuff, the notes that build up on top. And that's what this does particularly well. So here, I'll, I'll start demonstrating anyway. So I'll demonstrate the sound of the, um, of the parametric part I was telling you about. So that's the sweep filter. Now, right now, it's pretty wide. It's what, what a normal tone knob like on an amplifier would do. 
But what this has is it has a button to narrow it down to a half an octave, and that's when it becomes really obvious, and that's what's really cool about it. So here, I'm going to push that on now. You hear all that little clickety click on top? Yeah. So I can find the turnover frequency on these strings that really accent, that really st stands out, and that's what I'm really going for. Okay, now that I've decided that's kind of a cool little harmonic thing, see how easily that comes out? Now if I start pushing the drive up, that's where the distortion will be. Now that's not a good sound, that's not the distortion I'm looking for. It's not bad, but it's not. What I want is I want a bass with distortion on it, so what I did was I put this mixing control in it. So now I can still have my bass sound with that distortion behind it as if there's two amplifiers. just because it sounds pretty when you play melodies. Uh, so I'm, I'm adding all these things a little at a time now. Gives it a little more breath. That's, that's probably a little more than I usually like to have, but I think for playing solos it's nice. And then of all things, this is kind of crazy for a bass player, but it's a reverb. And I kind of, again, with that kind of solo sound. Keep it pretty subtle, but just so that if I turn that amp up, it would still sound nice. It wouldn't sound all dry and in your face, you know? And it's a very small, short plate. So here's... It sounds like it's in a hall slur. Right? That's without it. So I wouldn't use much more than that. all kinds of things. Uh, if you want to try it, you have, you're welcome to. Let's we'll see what it's like. Yeah. Well, nice uh, round tone there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> can I try it? <laughs> yes, you can. Come. What's your name, young man? Richard. Richard. Everybody, Richard. The bravest wow. man in the, in the place. <laughs> well, I just got here, but anyway. Wow. Just in time? Yeah, yeah.